Welcome to Indiana Sports Beat Radio, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni! Fires upfield into the end zone, and it's caught! Jelani Woods! Touchdown! I-N-D-Y! A 43-point night for Tyrese Halliburton! How do you like that, bud? Galloway drives all the way to the hole, throws it up, got it! Indiana's got their first lead of this contest. It's pretty simple, I win. Google me. Now, here's your host, Jim Coyle. Hey everybody, how's it going on this Wednesday? Hope you are doing well, having a grid uh, start to your week as we reach the halfway point on the program today. Dylan Sin will be joining us. Rick Boza to join us. We'll hear from Indiana coach Kurt Signetti. Plenty to talk about. Uh, the NAIA bans trans women, men, whatever you want to call them, uh, from sp- competing in sports. Stanford coaching legend, former IU player, graduate Tara Vanderveer, retires as the women's all-time wins leader, three national championships, over 1,200 wins. That's quite a bit. Um, Plenty to talk about and uh, looking forward to it. Hope you're having a great uh, start to your day. And uh, what's new? It, uh, oh, I'm not going to lie to you. It's nice to uh, feel a little relaxed, not not chasing everything with games coming and going and stopping and going. Um, a little relaxing. Um, I can't think of a word that would go quickly, but... Um, John Boy, what's a good uh, re- relaxing Wednesday? Wind down Wednesday. There you go. But that, yeah, that's perfect, especially people who who drink. Well, water. that's usually um, that usually happens for on a wine, but um, but we're winding down the basketball season, or I guess it, it is officially over at this point. Now that the national championship has concluded, we've officially moved into off season mode. It is portaling time. Those who, for those who are about to portal, we salute you. Yeah, um, Dawn Staley, which I love. Uh, she's, uh, I'm a big fan of hers. She made a comment last week that um, said, that said she supports transgender women, and, and I don't get into political stuff, and uh, but I don't know how political. I don't know that this is political. Um, but she says she supports transgender women, biological males playing women's college basketball. I find transgender, I'm sorry, but I find that to be ridiculous and maybe a PC answer. Uh, but I also find that to be an utterly ridiculous thing. Caitlyn Jenner, you know who that is, right? John, you know who Caitlyn Jenner is? Formerly Bruce Jenner, the Olympian. There you go. Former men's decathlon gold medal winner of the 1976 Olympics. The epitome of of, of Olympic 10 sports that the uh, decathlon covers, I believe. 10 events, rather. I found a, a quote made by Caitlyn Jenner, that if a boy has been through puberty or a transgender woman has been through male puberty, that they should no way be allowed to, and what he said, take medals away from women. And I agree. It's not the same. Jeez. And whatever, I know it's a minority, and it's so funny that that uh, people get all whacked when you take a stance against something that is utterly ridiculous. And men competing in women's sports is utterly ridiculous. And if you don't think they're men because they want, because they feel like a woman, and I don't care what anybody, 
I don't care about anybody's lifestyle. I'm not judging about that. But I'm saying, but I am saying you can feel however you want to feel, but that does not give you the right to cross lines. Especially when they give you a distinct and definite advantage. Anybody that does not think that biologically the male body is built or designed by whomever, however our bodies were designed, I had nothing to do with it. But it's a proven fact. They're built to be bigger, faster, stronger, longer bones, bigger bones, bigger muscles. I didn't make it up. I didn't create it. But for, for the idiots that just cannot comprehend the fact that it is what it is. I'm sorry about your lack of mental capacity. Um. Someone responded, I, 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 oh, what did I say to that response? Uh, I just said that I, I'm a big fan of Dawn, St uh, Dawn Staley, but this misses the mark for me. Women's basketball is growing exponentially. Don't screw it up. Biology is biology. And I've got one response was bummer for you. Please find a smaller minority to pretend is invading sports. And I'm like, you're an idiot. Which is how I feel about idiots. Um, but there's that. And with the movement of John Calipari from Kentucky to Arkansas, John, what did I say when the when it was announced the series between Kentucky and Indiana has <clears throat> has been revived? Do you recall? You mentioned that he will he will never face Indiana in Bloomington again. He will leave Kentucky on his own terms, and that it would be before the series resumes. And it wouldn't have been next year. No. So it would hell no. It would, have been, it would have been a ways out still, but does it start next year? Dag on it. Somebody, no, I believe it's 2025. The fall of okay. 2025 will be when it's the fall the of 2025, not the 25 season. See, that's yes. what gets confusing. Yeah. Um, so um yeah, he wouldn't have been around, but for a couple of those games anyway. The mere fact that can, that Indiana had to and did lower themselves to by giving Kentucky two home games in that series does that show desperation in some way or just a willingness to do whatever it takes to get the series started? I think it's yeah. just bowing to Kentucky wanting to get what they want, or I guess it was more so giving Calipari what he wanted yes. because he was not going to do the series that, in his mind, would give his oh, no. team, his program, a disadvantage. Which means which means not giving them an, an advantage. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see who. I, I still think it's going to be Scott Drew from Baylor that ends up taking the Kentucky job. Um, now I see, believe... I, that one doesn't surprise me when, when he was mentioned for Louisville, I'm like, no way. And I mentioned before him and both Scott drew and Mitch Barnhart, who is Kentucky's athletic director. They're, they're actually really good friends outside of the fact they don't work for each other currently. So it seems like a match made in heaven for those two specifically. I don't really think Scott drew's personality fits Kentucky the best, but Ultimately, that doesn't really matter. If you can win, it doesn't really matter what your personality truly is. And he's won a national title before, which that's the kind of guy that Kentucky wants to go after. So I, th I think it's going to be Scott Drew at Bay or from Baylor. Well, 
of course, I mean, he's proven to be a, a good coach. My gosh, he's competing in, in the Big 12 in the, well, it depends on who you talk to. If you talk to me, last year's toughest conference. Uh, if you talk the last to, two years, toughest conference, honestly. If you talk to Mike DeCourcy, not so much as we disagreed on that. Um, but um, absolutely, he's proven to be an outstanding coach and uh, recruiter. And he built something that wasn't there. And he did it before NIL, before the portal. So that's, it's, it's impressive. And he's a, he's not a clown. How do I amuse you? But he's not a clown. I don't see him going to come out and, and do and say the things that Calipari would say. No, he's truly the antithesis. In he terms doesn't of have the ego. Does not no. have the ego. How no, about they're that? getting a polar opposite in personality if Scott Drew does end up becoming their coach. But it almost you, you almost need somebody like that. You need something that's not quite what you were used to before. Maybe bring some bring a breath of fresh air, if you will, that e erases some of the arrogance that has been floating around that program for some time. And not that most of the arrogance wasn't deserved or justifiable because they are one of the top programs in the nation. But it, they always, I feel like they've always thought they're better than they actually were, especially these last five years when they only won one tournament game. Yeah. Um, shout out to my new favorite Twitter name. Baby Billy Freeman. Oh, is that Righteous Gemstones? Yeah. Oh, my. I'm Look at I'm that. Out. I'm leaving. I got Jim hopping out. I, I, I knew who Bruce Jenner was, and now I know what the Righteous Gemstones is. He's blown. I've blown his mind. What the hell is going on today? Is the sky falling? Uh, baby, oh, I've not for... seen the Righteous Gemstones, but I'm familiar with Baby Billy and the songs that he sings oh my god and his and you know his music what what's the um I, the one that he's singing out by the pool where he's got a shell on his back that's really funny yeah i don't have a memory it's, it's there will come a payday or something like that it's really funny <laughs> <laughs> we should sing that on fridays how have you not <laughs> so how if you've not seen it how do you know i've heard people talk about the show and just got me interested. But I, I I need to watch it. It sounds like a funny show. Oh, well, dude, it's got, uh, well, first of all, Baby Billy. It's got Baby Billy Freeman. Uh, Walter Scroggins, a great, has played oh, so many great. great characters. Looks like it's time to take a break. Welcome aboard Indiana Sports Beat Radio, powered by Andy Moore Honda. Get more to your door with andymorehonda.com. And... The Rusty Gator Fork and Ale down in Bedford with an incredible Creole Cajun cuisine, great eats, and a uh, music venue to boost. We're back with more Indiana Sports Beat Radio, including Dylan Sin, right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. In the market. Yeah, I need to watch Righteous Gemstones. There will come a payday. Hallelujah. What a payday. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. That as soon as you sing that, I can I can see him singing that now. It'd be really funny if if we if, I know we'd get copyrighted, but every Friday the last rejoin was there will come a payday because it's Friday, it's payday for most people. It would be funny. But unfortunately, the the powers that be don't allow for copyrighted music. Yeah, that's we can't even include copyrighted music on our podcasts at iHeart anymore. We have to use so our boards. We we have to 
we can play the music over the radio like over the air but it has to unre it can't be recorded in the podcast if that makes sense oh it's always it's always something it just goes to show you it's always something Sounds good. Great one. Great one. There will come a payday. Hallelujah. What a payday. You don't know where that's from, though, do you? I think that's an old church hymn, is it not? No, refund. Oh, the refunds. I thought you were talking about the song. <sighs> Yeah, I have no idea. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, you have to hear all the coughing sometimes. I'm ready to get over this cold or whatever it is. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. I hope you listeners on YouTube enjoy all this behind the scenes nonsense. All right, 20 seconds. No Dylan yet, but he hasn't told me that he wouldn't be here, so I'm assuming he'll be here momentarily. So, a meal at home or pick out a tomahawk steak or a grouper filet and enjoy it cooked to perfection in Chop Shop Steakhouse. Chop Shop Market and Table, a part of the Wild Food Group, is your butcher, baker, and fish house, no matter where you live. This segment is brought to you by the Chop Shop, home of the Indiana football and men's basketball coaches shows. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coy, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this Wednesday. Appreciate you being with us. Shout out to all the peeps on the Andy Morhonda hotline. Fred, Mike, shenanigans from Southern Wabash County. Bob down at Georgetown, Indiana. Adam Pena from Houston, Texas. Uh, let's see. All five starters for Indiana State are now in the portal. Yes. All going to St. Louis? No, I doubt that. I, I think that some of those guys are going to be able to find their way to be able to matriculate to uh, bigger and better paydays. I think you could purchase the entire starting five for Indiana State for about $1.5 million and start your own team. Quinnipiac, Lil Rody, Lil Rody, hey, Lil Rody could cough up 1.5 million of the 30 million Indiana gave him, and he could start his own team and 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 ha- upgrade his talent. Wouldn't that be funny? If the coach did that. Hmm. Donald. Joining from Atlanta, Georgia, originally from Southern Indiana, Dr. Drew says he heard Hurley is considering going to Kentucky. What's well, funny? I've heard I have not. I've heard nothing but the opposite. And as a matter of fact, he put that question to bed immediately after the the uh, championship. It's not happening. Not happening. <laughs> Uh, Bulls cast. I don't know what. The, oh, that's speculating on uh, coaches is just fun. It's it's not. Uh, it's far from a science. Tanis said he saw someone say Robbie Avila is only about six five. 
You know, he's listed at 6'8". I didn't get close enough to him to see. How he. I, I can't imagine he's only 6'5". But I can bet that he's not 6'8". Um, he might be six, seven. He's, I, but he's, I don't think he's quick enough. And I could be wrong. I don't know anything as far as from a coaching standpoint, but I just don't think he's quick enough to play the wing spot in, in a high level program. <laughs> Good shooter. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, you know, playing in the uh, MV Missouri Valley, a little different than playing in, say, the Big Ten or the Pac, or the, uh, there is no such thing as the Pac-12. Um, Big 12. Yeah, wow. The voice is back. That's right. It's crazy. Tana says the last time he saw Bruce Jenner, he was dressed like Peg Bundy. John, do you know who Peg Bundy is? Sorry, I was looking for Signetti. What was your question? Do you know who Peg Bundy is? Peg Bundy. I know who Ted Bundy is, but not Peg Bundy. Ooh, quite, a di quite a difference. Yeah, big difference, I'm assuming, hopefully. Big difference. Big difference. Uh, Dr. Drew responding earlier to the comment about the NAIA has banned. Hold on. Who, who's Peg Bundy? We didn't find out who Peg Bundy was. Well, everybody else in the world knows except for you. Oh, well, I'll, I'll stay in the dark then. That's okay. <laughs> uh, she was a character on a, a Fox show back when Fox first started coming out, um, married with children. Okay. I've heard married with children. But Drew says he was a decent, Andrew says I was a decent high school 800 runner. My time would have won the Olympics for women. Not fair. But, but see, trans people are stupid. They, they want the world. They want to be accepted, exceptions for everything. Because it's how their world is, I guess. It's ridiculous. It, it is one of the most ridiculous. It, it, this is one of the most ridiculous arguments I've ever heard. The fact that there even has to be legislation partly shows what a, the type of society we're living in today. Idiocy reigns supreme sometimes. Um... But yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. Ridiculous, redunkerous. What are you gonna do now that basketball is over? Wait for the uh, commitments to all fall into place for your team, no matter whomever that might be, Indiana, Purdue, uh, who knows? Indiana State, poor Indiana State, great run that they had this year, barely missing the NCAA tournament, and now their program is wrecked. I mean, like a wrecking ball, baby. Coach, gone. Every decent player, gone. You want to talk about uh, wailing and gnashing of teeth, buddy. They got it. They will be doing it. And I I don't know what they're going to do next year. They're, they're going to go from first to worst. crazy it will not be fun for the sycamore fans but hell what a hell of a year they they got to have russell says the chicago nfl quarterback painted his fingernails pink and sports a p 
pink phone and it caused a rumble in Soldier Field, you know, the one with the spaceship landed in. Yes. Well, that crap I don't care about, but I don't care what people do. I don't care how they dress. I don't care how they portray themselves. I, I don't care what lifestyle you lead. I, 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 I couldn't care less. But the argument I was talking about earlier is, I'm sorry, no. If you're a male, whatever, however you think of yourself, but if your body is a male body, you cannot compete against women. Why do you think they use a smaller basketball in basketball? But as I say that, the former point scoring leader from the AIAW times, which was the lead, the organization or um, the sanctioning body before the NCAA for women's basketball. Annette Woodard was the scoring leader from Kansas forever up until Caitlin Clark beat that. But did you know, because I did not, but did you know they played with the same size basketball as the men? Not only was there no three-point shot, they played with the same basketball that the men did. Think about that. And if you think it doesn't make a difference, I think um, Caitlin Clark has made like ended up with I don't know I, I'm going to guess it was like 543 made three pointers something like right around there well take 500 points off of her scoring record and guess what happens back down she goes back down she goes um so, and I say that because Lynette Woodard had actually originally spoke out saying, you know what, she's not really, I don't think she's breaking my record because we played with the men's ball. My record was not even recognized for 43 years because of the NCAA, which is truth to that. But did you see what Diana Torrizi said when talking about Caitlin Clark. Reality is coming. In response to her joining the WNBA. And I agree with that because while Caitlin Clark's a hell of a shooter, a, a, a good player, it's going to be interesting to see her play against females that are bigger, that are more experienced, that are taller, that are just as fast that have learned the nuances of playing professionally. So it'll be interesting to see that. How, how, how do you think that works out? Uh, how will Caitlin Clark do at the next level? I mean, I, I, it's, a shooter's a shooter. There's no doubt about that. But... She's also such a known commodity coming in that she's not going to sneak up on anybody. And no one in the WNBA wants to get embarrassed um, by this young up-and-comer. So they're going to Uh, and, and I think that there's probably, I don't, I hate to use the word jealousy, but uh, a lot of these players that are great players in their own right, who did not get this recognition, um, that are going to say, it's kind of similar without saying it to what Tarazi said reality is coming <laughs> that was a great statement though eh, 
I, I think the question was about how you think she's going to perform at the uh, when she moves up. She was, ah, reality. Let's just say reality is coming. <laughs> that was great. Um, but we won't have to wait long to see either. That's the crazy thing. It happens kind of quickly for the women as their season ends, the, there's the draft, and then the season starts. Kind of nuts. The uh, portal still spinning like a top. So many names, and a, a lot of fans, no matter, again, whatever team you follow, they're, they're, they want – they want some action. They want to hear some some landed names. But the thing is, every day more and more names were piling into it. So you don't want to move too soon. Because every day we're hearing new names. Oklahoma State transfer guard Javon Small, one of the latest. That came out late Monday uh, that the Hoosiers have reportedly made contact with Oklahoma State guard, transfer guard Javon Small. Other schools like Texas, Kansas, Michigan, Baylor, and Villanova have all reached out to the transfer guard. In total, Small has around 20 teams reportedly interested in his services. Six foot two point guard. He's from South Bend originally. He didn't spend his entire high school career in Indiana, though. As a freshman, he played uh, junior varsity basketball at South Bend Riley in his hometown, then transferred to Franklin Central. But then he uh, finished up at Arizona Compass Prep. Started out his collegiate career at East Carolina. It's funny that for Indiana, they could end up with three or four guys on their roster. And I'm not saying that they're chasing these guys specifically for this and it, that it'll happen or that it'll happen. But ironically, they could end up with a, a chunk of players originally from Indiana that have taken the long and winding road to Bloomington. I mean, we'll, we'll see how it all shakes out in the end. Um, Break. Emma, Emma isn't, uh, it says, let me get Emma's comment up. Well, let's take a break real quick. We'll come back and I'll talk about Emma's comment in regards to IU being on the same trend as last year in the portal. We got lots more coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio, brought to you by the Chop Shop Market and Table, home of the Indiana basketball and football coaches shows, located just north of Bloomington High School, south on South Walnut. Chop Shop is your local meat shop, steakhouse, and caterer, no matter where you live, offering a great sit-down dining experience for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. You can pick your own steak. From the on-site butcher or choose from their, from their incredible daily dinner specials. What is today? Today's Oh, yeah. You know what today is? It's Fried Chicken Wednesday, baby. And you can guarantee you I will be there this evening uh, checking that out. Or you can get some incredible Wagyu steaks from the Boyles family farm right down there in Mitchell that uh, is available. A chop shop back with more right after this we'll be right back for more indiana sports beat radio with jim coyle presented by andy moore honda of bloomington if you're looking for a home all right man i've got some if you want to use it now um i was i didn't know dylan wasn't going to be on he hadn't said i tried reaching out to him too i didn't hear from him Oh, oh yeah. 
I, w I don't think that we'll get a tag for this. Uh, did I send that to you, John, the awful coaching video? The Calipari one you did. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, there's... Whew. Okay, well, now we've got a new one. Uh, let's see. Where did Scott send that to me? Right. Too many daggone ways of being reached. Gee whiz. <laughs> Was it there? Was it there? Was it there? I don't think so. All right. So was it here? Was it here? Was it here? I don't think so. I'm running out of places. Um, was it there? Damn it. Oh, wait, just go to, uh, just go to, uh, yeah, I saved it. All right, so. Daggone it. Man. All right. No. All right, here we go. That's right, 2023 and 2024, Honda Pilots, HRVs, CRVs, Honda Ridge Lines, Payment free for 90 days or get 0.9% APR financing for 36 months on a 2023 Honda Ridge line. Go to anymorehonda.com and get more to your door. This segment is brought to you by Remax Advanced Realty, Indie Home Pros team by Cheryl Sizemore. <laughs> Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyne, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Hey, 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 welcome back. Indiana Sports Beat Radio on this Wednesday. Uh, we are getting lots of uh, April showers in anticipation of May flowers. While the month of April uh, finally slows down a little bit for a couple of weeks. What are we, uh, April 10th? Um... May heats it up, baby. The Kentucky Derby and then the month of May at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the world's greatest spectacle in racing, the Indianapolis 500. Um, Where did that comment go? Well, first of all, Scott, send that to me again. I can't remember where uh, what message source I got that. Um, but the awful announcing guy, Sam Kennison, he did one on Calipari. He did another one for the national championship game. Um, he didn't blast painter as badly as he did Calipari. And I don't think that, uh, Matt painter will be going anywhere soon. Like Calipari did Emma. 777 says, uh, Jim, is and I, you on the same trend as last year as far as portal goes, as far as not landing kids? I know they casted a larger net, but they still haven't landed any. How confident are you this year? Well, they haven't landed any because I'm not sure that they want to land them just yet. I haven't really heard of anybody committing to anywhere. But that's because these guys are all out fielding the offers. They want to check out everybody, and they've got to go on visits. It's a process. And there are, like I just said, there are new names entered every day. It, it, it was just an ongoing thing. Um, 
if you're for for Indiana fans, I, I I think they're going to be fine in the portal this year. I think that Mike Woodson, although is a very stubborn coach, learned a lesson in not having the talent. Last year, he didn't have the talent. He did not land the talent. He did not get the talent that he needed to compete. College basketball does not go through the middle. Ask Zach Eady how that worked out for Purdue. How did that work out for Purdue? If, if college basketball goes through the middle and Zach Eady's, what do you end up with? How many points? I can't remember. A bunch. Did he get 40 again? I can't remember. Regardless, um, it wasn't about the middle. 37, 37 points. So no, it does not go through the middle. Middle's a great part. But if you don't have the rest, you're just part of the of a, a middling group. You have to be elite. Period. End of story. It's why I said for a month, Purdue will not win the national championship. They did not have enough elite talent. They got Zach Eady, who's dominant. And as far as the eliteness, that's where it stopped. And if you watch the national championship game, you saw that very thing. I'm not beating down on Purdue. I'm just pointing out a fact. Braden Smith, not elite. Fletcher Lawyer, not elite. Lance Jones, not elite. Trey Kaufman Wren, not elite. Mason Gillis, not elite. You have to have elite talent, especially in this day and age, period. And what's going to be interesting to me is Matt Painter. What is he going to do? Is he going to alter and alter, not completely change, because I think you have to have a combination of a lot of these things. He's got great culture at Purdue. IU has no culture. They have no identity right now. I think culture is huge. I think it, 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 it carries things for a team throughout the season. It keeps the team bound together. If it's not, if you don't have that, you've just got some pieces kind of flinging off here and flinging off there. Purdue has great culture, but they have, they don't have the elite talent. And no, Purdue cannot continue that way if they have any thoughts of ever winning a national championship. Again, uh, going forward. Anybody, any anybody that, for that matter, Indiana's the same way. <laughs> they have to have elite talent. Um, Trey Galloway. I'm sorry, he's not elite. Gabe Cups is not elite. Mike Woodson says he what he came here to win Big Ten and, and national championships. Well, Gabe Cups and Trey Galloway are not going to be the starters on any team that wins a Big Ten or a national championship. It's not a knock on those guys. It's just, again, the facts of the matter, which are elite talent. End of story. All five guys don't have to be NBA draft picks, but you better damn sure have three to four or you're not going to win a national championship. 
that has been borne out. The fact that Danny Hurley was able to replace what he lost without missing a beat, it's mind-numbing. Because not only do you have to replace those guys, you have to have, be, have everybody on the same page. So I guarantee you they've got culture at UConn because Hurley demands it. He demands that because that's what he needs to go far. He's been there. He's been to the mountaintop. He's seen it twice. What will Indiana's offense look like next year? I mean, I can ask that without even knowing who the players are because Indiana was not only one of the worst, but lowest frequency in three-point shooting last year. Not going to not gonna do it. Wouldn't be prudent at this juncture. You got to shoot the threes. You just have to, and you got to hit them. You can't be a 50%, 55% free throw shooting team. That's utterly ridiculous. There is nothing in the world that burns my ass more than a team that can't hit free throws. That is such a basic fundamental. High schoolers do this without problem. Why all of a sudden when you arrive in college and, and you can't do that? How can you have a three-point shooter, a prolific three-point shooter, that can't focus enough to hit a free throw? I don't know. It's court, well, Todd thinks that's generally always form, and I, I will bow to him there. He definitely is the – he's the, the shot maker, the shot doc. So – but I I do think that there's no way to imagine that uh, mentality does not come into play. I I know I know it does for some for certain guys if they're not able to handle that mental stress. And there's a different mental stress at the free throw line than say shooting a three because shooting a three point comes in action. It comes in the flow in the flow of the game in the movement. You're not thinking. You go boom. You go up. Free throw is a different deal. Everybody's looking at you. Everybody's yelling or whatever. Guys are all draped around you. It's just you, the basketball, the goal. And you know that. So there is a different mental. Uh... But the good guys, the good shooters, they don't think about that crap. They just go up there and go through their routine of shooting and shoot. Shooters shoot, baby. Shooters shoot. Kurt Signetti, Indiana football coach, we'll hear from him in the uh, next hour. As spring practice is winding down, the spring game, today's Wednesday, a week from tomorrow, at Indiana's Memorial Stadium, that is Little 500 weekend. That is the weekend of the big concert. Speaking of which, we got to get our old buddy uh, Clayton Anderson on. He'll be uh, opening up that concert. Ran into him at the boys' basketball state finals. They uh, had him there singing Back home again in Indiana. Uh, so he had to sing that for all four games. It's kind of hard to compare to Jim Neighbors singing that. He had such a deep voice. John, do you know who Jim Neighbors is? Was. He sounds like a good neighbor, but that's that's about the extent that I could say neighbor predict. neighbor neighbor no i don't know who he is you don't get that either neighbor mm -hmm. no sir 
God, man, you haven't seen the Arnold Schwarzenegger State Farm commercials? I have, but I didn't know like that's what you were doing. a good neighbor. Yes, I have seen that. I didn't know that's what you were doing. Arnold, it's neighbor. That's what I said. Neighbor. I think that's pretty funny. Not me, but that commercial is pretty funny. That was that was pretty creative. But uh, yeah, Clayton Anderson, uh, was it Kane Brown? Is that who the headliner is? Yes, at Memorial Stadium. I think there's four, four other for four total acts for the show. Are there four? Yeah, so it's Clayton Anderson's the the first one. John Party is one of them, and then Kane Brown. I can't think of who the the, the fourth guy is. That I'm not thinking of, but there is four acts for this show. Jack Party, John Party, John. See, it's what I said. John Party, Party, <laughs> whatever his name is. Um, I don't know who the other one is, but yeah, that's they've only had. Has there been two uh, other than the? I think the the Melon Camp concert back in the eighties is is that the only concert they've had in that stadium like that? I'm not sure, but this is a, this will be a good trial run. I'm sure it won't be the last concert if it goes well. Yeah, let's see. Well, it's called it, the Full Ride Tour. It is the opening stop on Kane Brown's Full Ride Tour. And then, so the, the three other acts. So Clayton Anderson's first, I mentioned. Jesse Murph. That's the one I was forgetting. He's second. John Party will be third. And then headliner Kane Brown will be rounding out the, the lineup for this tour now i've heard of kane brown um uh, who's the guy between murph and brown oh john jack party john, john party i'm um, keep thinking of his brother jack yeah it'd be interesting interesting to see how a country style concert goes over there but today's country especially is not. this modern day country this isn't yeah this isn't, it's not real country. not your father's it's, country music as one no. might say no it ain't my country. Let's just say that. But uh, so there's a lot of, you know, you're in, you're in the heart of the, the Midwest here. So, and Bloomington is surrounded by rural areas. So there should be a, a good turnout. It's on a Thursday night. That no, what day is the concert? Uh, April 13th. That's coming. That's a few days. It's this Saturday. You're kidding me. Yeah, this Saturday. It's the week before. I did not know that. I I did not know that. Wow. I guess, right. Is it time to take a break? Let's do that. When we come back, we're going to hear from Indiana football coach Kurt Signetti as uh, spring ball is winding down. That, Rick Bozitz joins us later. We've got plenty more here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Back with it. Brought to you by REMAX Realty, Cheryl Sizemore. For those in the uh, market for a home in the Indianapolis area, you need Cheryl and her two decades of experience. It could be the difference in getting the home you want or not. Reach out to her, Cheryl, at IndyHomePros.com. Back with more after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. In the market for. All right.
It's not just their starting five. Indiana State's entire squad is now in the portal. That's the, the one the the programs that suffer the most from this portal. It's it's the small ones. When they have any sort of success, you can almost yeah. But you say that, but also <clears throat> look at the players who are benefiting. Oh, I'm not saying I, I I hate it for the players. It's just the the programs have a lot more work to do each and every year. Whenever I mean, if Indiana State loses their entire roster, I mean that is. That's tough to do. It happened to Murray State a few years ago, too, the first year that the portal opened. When you're a small school and you have success, you're almost guaranteed to lose everybody. Only exception, really, is FAU last year to this year. By the way, has, has Dusty May, has he started building his roster at Michigan yet? Do we know if he's landed anybody? I do not. I have not heard that he has. It's like I said a minute ago. It's uh, there. These names have continued to go into that, into the to the shaker, to the hopper. Yeah. So you, probably won't. First start of all, you've got to names. Yeah. The, well, the visits. The visits start. Yeah. They start for Indiana this week. This weekend. Yep. All right. Here we go. I got Signetti. 812-583-0919 or go to mystonecrestliving.com that's mystonecrestliving.com for more details this segment is brought to you by hoosier hanks east welcome back to indiana sports beat radio with jim court presented by andy moore honda of bloomington Hey, 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 welcome back. It is Wednesday. Thanks a lot for being with us. We appreciate you. Rick Bozich coming up here in a little bit. Uh, as the Pacers are still rolling along. Got away with one a few nights ago. I think I mentioned that yesterday. The uh, NBA acknowledged that they screwed it up. Uh, upcoming visits to Indiana. A lot of guards, baby. They need them. And uh, I have no doubts that they'll get them. I think that this year's transfer portal market is much more open. But I also think that Indiana did not recognize their needs last year. I'll just say Indiana instead of whatever, but. Um, Tony Perkins from Iowa, originally from Indy, he has not set a date yet, but, uh, he's expected, Indiana's hoping to get him in for a visit, Indianapolis native. He's in, his final six includes Indiana along with Ole Miss and Oklahoma, Oregon, Arkansas, Missouri. He has one year of experience left. I like, I mean, you should get the best players you can get. But, it, boy, if you can get a two-year guy, it makes, well, uh, you'd like to think that it makes life easier, but you gotta you got to re-recruit that dude all around to get into the following season. But if you're successful, that's a hell of a lot easier to recruit a guy that you already have as opposed to having to go out and get one. Uh, guys like Leland Walker, another Indianapolis native, we've heard talk about, played at Eastern Kentucky, another guard. He's had to reschedule his visit uh, for some time after the dead period. So you might see him on campus uh, anytime. But with more names coming out, that's when also you're like, oh, well, all right, never mind. Miles Rice is another name from Washington State that has been out there for a minute. 
no visit is set for him. Ryan Conwell, who recently just went into the portal from Indiana State, that's 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 a name that gets your attention. Actually, it's his stats that get your attention. 16 and a half points, nearly six rebounds, three assists per game. 40.7% on three-point attempts. Let me say that again. 40 freaking percent. And that's on three made threes a game. That means he's putting up seven, eight. That's the proper amount for a player that Indiana needs. But you need more of those guys. You have multiple of those. Now you've got a a multi-pronged attack. But and and that's another guy that I talked about that could take the uh, the long road around to getting to Bloomington from Indianapolis. But man, he's he he's he's legit. Now, do they land him? Well, we'll see. There are more players besides guards. Drexel forward, Amari Williams. He could be uh, one that you'll see next year. He's visiting next weekend. During Little Five, big weekend. That's a big weekend for Indiana to bring guys in. The campus is lit. Bloomington is lit. The students are lit, literally. If you have not gone through, if you did not go to IU, and if you have not gone through a Little Five weekend, eh, it's hard to describe mainly because the memory's a little foggy. Ha! But uh, they don't call it the world's greatest college weekend for nothing. You've got names like uh, Kanan Carlisle, Stanford guard, also in next weekend during Little Five. He's one of the top guards in the portal. And one of the first that Indiana reached out to. Obviously, it's it, it, that's Indiana's top priority. Guards, plural. You you need. You, you've got McKenzie and Baco out on a wing. Um. You you need a dynamic point guard. And I know that. <clears throat> The older set of Indiana fans just want to see these Indiana players. And this, the transfer portal shows that they're there. Indiana just not having the ability to recognize them. Tony Perkins got away. All these guys that got away, um, that were let get away, basically. But the transfer portal is uh, is just a training ground. It's you can use it like a feeder system, but you still need to land. There are still elite freshmen out there. Cooper Flag is Cooper Flag. Let me tell you. I'll tell you exactly why he, he gets the attention he gets. If if Duke gets two years out of him, which I cannot imagine that, but if they were to get two years out of him, whoo, that second year after a year of being in college, of going through the strength program, uh, you know, and no matter where you are, if you're able to keep a guy for two years, an elite guy, you got something. You're gonna have something. Because it's still a level up. Now, guys that come from places like Montverde or Paul the Sixth or Prolific Prep, 
they're advanced. And that doesn't mean that somebody from can't come out of high school and, and be as good. But those guys that come from those academies, they're advanced because they play advanced basketball. They play an advanced schedule. At the Chipotle Nationals, I've said it before the other day, there were 12 guys, 11 of them committed to D1 schools, top-notch D1 schools, with one exception. There was one, uh, uh, and this was a one oddity. Paul the Sixth, who lost to Montverde in the uh, Chipotle National Finals, there was a guy there. I, I had to look up to see who it was, but there was a, a commitment to Rhode Island. How the hell, little Rhodey got a guy at that level is kind of funny because I look at their record, I look at his record. And I'm thinking, and I look back at the recruit, and I just want to say, what the hell are you thinking? Or is Archie dipping into his IU fund to pay you in an IO money? Because there's no reason I can see anybody at that level, that good, going to Rhode Island. Why? Unless you're from there. But. What about John Calipari's uh, exit from Kentucky? Does that, is there a ripple effect uh, that can affect Indiana basketball? And by that, I mean fallout from, uh, we've seen one decommitment. I think we've seen one portal, one guy jump into the portal, Bradshaw. So, there's going to be more. And again, that's why you're not seeing, uh, was it Emma asked that question earlier? Well, these guys haven't made visits, man. It You got to get all that stuff set up. Uh, let's see. Someone asked about doing a wellness check on Michael. I'm sure that's just because he's not. Oh, I get it. Purdue fan. Uh, a genuine Purdue fan. Scott says that uh, Drew is too clean for Kentucky. Man, Kentucky needs that in the worst way. A good, clean coach. Because it gives people less to harp on Kentucky about then you just have the Kentucky fans to 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 John. But let me tell you, if he gets them rolling, that could be Indiana's worst nightmare. Seeing Kentucky land Scott Drew, you're going to be playing against Drew in two seasons. That's next. No, yeah, it's two seasons away. That's how we've already established that. But, and that's another thing. Indiana, there's no, I, I don't think that there's any doubt that unless Indiana goes on a hell of a run this season, and hell of a run does not mean getting to the NCAA tournament and losing the first game. That's not a hell of a run. I'm sorry. Um. Unless they make it to the second weekend, I'm still, if I were a fan, I would have a great trepidation about where it's going. But we have to wait and see what happens next year. And that does remind me, I'm a, I got a little soapbox issue. I think I talked about this yesterday. I'm tired of all of the complaining. Now, I know it happens with Kentucky's fan base, even with Purdue's small, much smaller fan base. Uh, any, any good program, any program that is an old school blue. Used to winning. 
or used to or having such a long, you know, it goes back deep. Indiana's goes back deep. It just hasn't, it's been, it's just been in a, it's been in hibernation. But anyway, I'm, I'm tired of the, and a big part of this is social media. But Indiana fans bitching and moaning about the same things from four months ago. What the hell are you talking? Why are you talking about whatever you're talking about? The season's over. The decision that Mike Woodson will be back next year is over. There, there's nothing for you to complain about at this moment. There is nothing being going on. There's no basketball being played. It's recruiting time. That's in the middle of, of, of the beginnings of that. But yet there are constant barrages of the same old idiotic complaints. And someone jumped on me because I sent out, out that out in a tweet or something yesterday and well, I've heard you. Yes, I have. I don't complain. I make points. But guess what? That's my job. That's what I do. We have to engage in conversation. There has to be give and take. There has to be things to talk about. Why? But I'm not just sitting here every day bitching about Mike Woodson, bitching about uh, the state of Indiana basketball, although it's in a a state that the fans are are not happy about. Eh. Well, now guess what? It's like a bag of Lay's. Basketball seasons are like Lay's potato chips. They make more. And here comes another one next season. So now it's time to... And someone said, you're basically telling everybody to shut up. And I wasn't really... But in hindsight, yeah, maybe I am. Shut up! Shut the hell up! I'm not an expert. I've never claimed to be an expert. But 90% of the people that are chiming in on social media don't know jack. I only know what I know. But I also know... There's plenty I don't know. Can you imagine how much most of those people don't know? Eh, pretty much all of it. But the 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 the, the complaining has gotten to a point to where I'm like, you know what? I think those people are just people that complain to complain or complain to be heard. I, I I'm, Twitter. Should you should have to have a license to be on Twitter? Other than that, go on Facebook. That's where that stuff belongs. There are no less than a dozen Facebook IU fan pages, and it cracks me up. You got to be a true fan. Da 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 da. True fan. What in the flying F is a true fan? No such thing. No such thing. That That's another thing that cracks me up. How that got started with this fan base is beyond me. No such thing. Read my lips. Now, the fact that Mike Woodson chose Senior Day as a bully pulpit and used that phraseology to cater and pander to a built-in audience of, uh, let's say, people that overlook or don't know anything other than winning and losing. Oh, they won. Oh, they lost. They don't know the ins and outs. They don't know the whys and the what whatnots. But... That's, that was ridiculous. And I'll be honest with you. Brian Evans, when he was on with uh, JMV, and a big shout out to uh, Mike Lascott. Saw him last night. 
great dude. But uh, I forgot what I was talking about, John. Brian Evans, what was he talking about? On, on you were talking about Woodson in the senior night speech. Oh yes, uh, Brian went off and saying, "What the hell is going on when you got two guys that you know are coming back, but you trot them out there on senior day anyway to go through this sham show, mainly so they could show support for Mike Woodson." That's how it came across to him, who is one of Indiana's former greats, NBA player, et cetera, et cetera. But that, that, just stuff like that is, I find it juvenile. So there's, there's immaturity on both sides. The fan base shows a lot of juvenile uh, activity, but yet then you've got juvenile activity being made that way as well. We've got lots more coming up and. I can tell you what it won't be. Juvenile. The captain, Rick Bozich, joins us from WDRB.com. Man, we got plenty to talk about with the portal, new Louisville coach, Kentucky's in search of a coach. Whoo! Going to need the time. We're back with more Indiana Sports Beat Radio, brought to you by Hoosier Hanks East, located over off of College Mall Road on the east side of Bloomington, great place to catch a game. Great food. And actually, their salads are incredible. Make sure you stop in. Back with more right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Oh, my God, Rick. I've just been me all day, and I've been running my mouth. Oh, really? Where's Ned and Rip? Yeah, he didn't Both him it. and Dylan are busy. We had Dylan, we missed, Usually, we have Dylan Sin on today, too. Are you out on the lanai? No. We're, I'm in the family room. I've My life's been turned upside down because Ruby tore her ACL, so she's on the DL. Oh, man. So yeah, I, you sent me that, and I'm like, oh, man, we got Ruby on the DL already. Or the she's season's just getting underway. She's on no activity for the next uh, eight weeks. Good luck with that. How did she tear her uh, – was it ACL or MCL, what you say? It's called a CCL in a dog, actually. She was out in the backyard running around, and I don't know. She stepped in a hole. How old is Ruby? Seven. Oh, hey. That's a that's a prime. She's right in the prime. Down. Down. Stay. Yeah, we do have a lot to talk about. Ruby's torn C CCL on the DL DL for an unknown, unspecified amount of time, hoping to have her back by the playoffs. <laughs> Are the Pacers in the playoffs? They are at the moment. They're hanging in there. I, I don't think that they've been moved out of six. They got help with a bad call, a couple bad calls the other night, apparently. The NBA acknowledged. What was the reaction in blooming to the results of the championship game? Oh, you know what? I've I'm not even paid attention because I know what it would what it was going to be. It's here's a more important question. Was did they overhype? the crowd for the eclipse in Bloomington or was it legit? Well, I can only speak to the fact that I did not leave uh, Eagle Point. I was actually, I played golf uh, and was on hole 12 during the total eclipse, which was kind of wild because it got kind of dark. Right. The lights, the lights came on. Um yeah, it was it, then. Then when that diamond came out, wow! Right, that was something. But you, but I, I, I don't, I, I cannot give you a an answer. I know that they were charging ridiculous prices everywhere. I know that William Shatner watched from Bloomingdale, Indiana. Where is Did that? Did you see that? It's no. Bloomington CBS News quote. Here we go, guys. It was C Ten seconds. 
APR financing for 36 months on a 2023 Honda Ridgeline. Go to anymorehonda.com and get more to your door. This segment is brought to you by Bubba's 33 in Clarksville and Evansville. Pizza, burgers, beer. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Corey, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio on this Wednesday. The Captain Rick Bozitz from WDRB.com. Make sure you give him a follow to stay up to breast on all of what's happening in college basketball, sports in general. Uh, and we've got plenty to talk about. Uh, obviously, Indiana, they're, they're, the story with Indiana is the portal. you got Louisville <laughs> with a new coach. Uh, you've got Kentucky that doesn't have a coach. You've got Indiana State who doesn't have a coach or a team. Uh, so it's, it's a wild time in college basketball, Rick Bozich. And Rick and Ruby is on the disabled list with a torn CCL. The hope is to get her back by the playoffs. <laughs> We're hoping she's back by June 1st. We're optimistic. Um, yeah, I don't even know where to begin. The championship games were the women's game outdraws the men's game on TV. Uh Indiana has yet to get anybody out of the portal, even though they skipped the NIT to get a head start on portal hunting. Um, well, I, that's been a discussion, and I think that that's a big part of because every day there have just been two lots of new names that are going into that, right. and the visits are just now happening. So right. that has been a. I wouldn't have expected them to actually. If I were a fan, I, looking at it from a fan's perspective. I don't know that I would have wanted them to have landed anyone yet, unless it's a top of the line elite guy. Because of it's that's like walking into a store and and seeing the the stuff next to the cash register, buying something, and turn around and walking out. Yeah, I guess I would thought by now they would have got one. Uh, you know, Gonzaga and some other schools have gotten one, but you know, you got to be patient, let it play out. They need to get five or six, right? Don't they have seven oh, yeah. open spots? I think it is, or six or seven. I, they, I can't track of it all. I think it's. Six. I think they have six remaining. Six remaining. Um, so that'll be interesting. I know they're in on some fairly significant players at a variety of different positions. Uh, I know there was a lot of talk yesterday about the Indiana State kid from Pike. What's his name? Ryan Conwell, a uh, really good player. They're trying to get oh, in yeah. on him. That, that'll that be dude, a tough one. He's his he's stats good. are. He's got. He's he's a. He's in a great position. Let's just say that. I mean, he's a 40% three-point shooter and an 88% that's mind free throw boggling. shooter. Mind-boggling. Uh, and that's on three made threes a game. Who started his career at South Florida and was Marion County Player of the Year, and the in-state schools evidently didn't want him or need him or value him. Um, you know. Neither did the Louisville, Indiana schools. Louisville got uh, Pat Kelsey, who's – off to a very um, energetic and forceful start, uh, trying to stir up interest in Louisville basketball. Uh, but as another school, every player went the portal, and three of them have already committed elsewhere. One, Sky Clark to UCLA, Trey White committed yesterday to Illinois, and Brandon Huntley Hatfield to NC State. So their three best players are definitely all gone, so he's going to have a whole new team. And then the Kentucky thing, which came out of nowhere on, what, Sunday night, I guess it was? Yeah, Sunday night. Uh, and, you know, Cal should be announced. I'd say that I think it's a, the rumor yesterday was it's going to be a 6 o'clock press conference uh, tonight uh, at Arkansas. So Do they have the chair John set up. Calipari stand up there and call the Hogs, which will be. That'll be sweet, on- sweet. Yep. Um, and who are they going to get? You know, a lot of different names. I've heard them all from Rick Patino, Billy Donovan, Scott Drew. And I've got somebody who's I respect greatly, who seriously tried to um, tell me this morning that he thinks Brad Stevens is a possibility. And if you want to see IU basketball fans go into complete meltdown mode, that's all it would take. <laughs> you ain't lying. No, I mean, what, uh, how, how do you think that would go over? If, oh, well, exactly how you just described it. 
it would be a, a nuclear meltdown. Uh, yes, it, would. it would just be a nuclear meltdown. But it would also, with that on uh, the IU administration and Scott Dolson, uh, I, I, I'm not saying it was. I'm just asking to not being able to, if Kentucky were able, were able to do that, and Indiana having that had that opportunity and trying and failing, that that is would not go over well. No, would uh, so we'll see what happens. Whether that's, I think it's going to be Scott Drew. From a personal standpoint, I hope it's Billy that sounds. Scott. And you know what? And that makes the most sense when his name was mentioned for Louisville. Rick, I said, no way. What? Why the crap would he leave Baylor for Louisville? This is not. This is not Louisville. Um, and I, this I can see. Yeah, and he's got a relationship with. Uh, Mitch Barnhart, the athletic director. That's a big difference between Louisville and Kentucky in this one. Mitch Barnhart has signaled in the past his admiration for Scott Drew. Um, and, and you're, I mean, Kentucky's a different level, eight national championships and much bigger national fan base. Uh, you know, what Calipari's done there, what Rick Patino's done there. You, we, we know the whole list. So it just would become a matter of whether Scott Drew wants to take on the negatives of that job as well as the positives, because there are both. Um, and John Calipari experienced the other side of being the UK coach the last few years, which is, you know, not getting to the Sweet 16, not winning SEC championships is going to make everybody turn against you, and everybody has ha ha turned against him this year. Yeah, and uh, will any Kentucky players follow Ricky I mean, uh, 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 Calipari yeah, to Arkansas. I, I think they'll be in quite the recruits will. I think a number of the recruits will. Two of them have already asked, I think, out of their letter of uh, commitment. Who are those two? Carter Knox is one of them. And I'm not, I got to think about who the other one was. I think two of them have asked uh, out of their letter of, of intent. And, you know, Cal did the same thing when he came here from Memphis. He brought John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins and later added Eric Bledsoe. Um, this is not going to be, despite the public, uh, you know, utterings, the most pleasant divorce. And I think since he's staying in the same league and going to be competing against Kentucky, he's going to be highly motivated to do everything he can to leave rubble at Lexington as he heads to Fayetteville. Yeah, uh, the, the talk uh, quickly doused with about uh, Danny Hurley going to Kentucky. I, I'm like, why? Why Why would he want to go to Kentucky? He, he's, he just won back-to-back -back national championships at UConn. He doesn't need Kentucky. He just rebuilt a team that lost possibly more than any other team in the country lost with 75% of his offense – Three guys to the NBA, and he rebuilt that and won another national title, which I don't know how right. the hell that happens. But he did I mean, it. the only reason would be money. I mean, his I think his salary is five million a year, and he got one point eight million in bonuses. But I'm sure UConn will step it up some. And you know, you're right. He, does, I mean, UConn has won what six national titles since 1999. Kentucky's won one. Um, you know, there's no need for him to come to Kentucky unless you just want to try and become a coach who's won at two different places or, or you, you know, you, they're going to offer him. Someone tried to tell me yesterday, they would offer him 11 million a year for 10 years. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but because you hear all kind of crazy things, but you know, he could stay at UConn and win. he's 53 years old, he could win a couple more national titles titles there and put himself in coach K territory. So I, I don't really see it. I hate talking about Billy Donovan only because it's become a parody that anytime you're talking about uh, a big time college job, uh, his name is mentioned mainly halfway in joking fashion. Not he's worthy of it, but it's half the time it's in Joe. It, you know, hey, Billy Donovan's wife was seen looking for houses in Lexington. Uh, but this is a little different because of his 
relationship with former Kentucky coach Rick Pitino because eh, things, I don't know how great things are in the NBA, but I don't know that he wants to leave a situation where he doesn't have to recruit. He's got a general manager that does that. Um, but, I, I, you know, who knows? Yeah, the way it's been explained to me is that, you know, the Bulls have kind of stalled out. I don't know, this is just, what, fourth year maybe? And they're one of those middle-of-the-pack teams that they're not good enough to compete for an NBA title or even a, a, a Eastern Conference championship. But they're not bad enough that they're way down in the lottery and going to get a bunch of good players, so they're kind of stuck in the middle. Um, and as somebody else explained it to me, he's got a son – who is in the coaching business in the G League team in Chicago. And he's probably never going to be able to be an NBA coach, but he could bring him with him, Kentucky, and have him on the bench and get him off to a head start as being a college coach. And, you know, I, I don't know if that's true or not. Billy, if you, depending on – you can read whatever you want to into his press conference last night because the first two questions he got before the game against the Knicks were about the Kentucky job. And he basically said he's committed to what he's doing with the Bulls, but he never said, no, I wouldn't listen to Kentucky. So you can read that either way. So I, and I, I'm going back to, I think it's going to be Scott Drew, and I'd like to see Billy Donovan. Well, there you go. Either would, would go over extraordinarily well in Lexington. Uh, I think, well, I know. They would be giddy with either of those. They would – they would send a caravan to go pick him up and, and carry him in on a chariot. Billy? Either one of those guys, uh, they bring them both in so on a chariot. Sure. I'm not quite so sure they'll be that over the moon for Scott Drew. I mean, he's he did win a national championship, but um, he's got a lot of early flameouts in the NCAA tournament. You know, there isn't a fan base around that's going to have unanimity around the guy. They'll, they'll be a, a solid 20 to 25% of UK fans that will be less, less than blown away by Scott Drew. That's my prediction. Yeah. You know, and the thing is about coming to Kentucky, even though people complain about Cal, whoever comes in the first time he re recruits a guy who's like number 77 on the top 100 ranking, instead of being John Wall or Anthony Davis or Carl Anthony Towns or, um, Shea Gilgis Alexander or DJ Wagner or Rob Dillingham, <clears throat> they're going to say, "This is that's not how Cal recruited. He got the he got the top class in the country, the second best best class in the country, fourteen out of fifteen years. What are we doing here?" So it's it's a it, it, this is a tough job. As much as they complained about Calipari, um, you're going to be measured against what he did, and. The game has changed immensely yeah. since uh, Billy Donovan was in it. Although Kentucky's in a fine position, it's not like he's going to a school that does not have the resources. No, they uh, have NIL. They have NIL money. I think that's one of the things. <clears throat> supposedly, that then again, put, haven't they always had NIL money? That's what they say. That's what Larry Bird said <laughs> to Rick Roby. Um, that he took a pay cut when he came to the Pacers oh, um, yeah, or, the, or the Celtics or whatever it was. Uh, by the way, I just got several texts and tweets. It's official. Arkansas has announced that John Calipari is their next coach, which is very yeah. interesting. I'm, I'm, that's the surprising part of it is I, I thought there was a chance Cal would leave. I would have never predicted he would go to Fayetteville, Arkansas. Would you? No, but I, I – it's for one thing, it keeps him in the SEC, which is a right. little ironic because now he faces the direct possibility of getting his ass kicked by Kentucky. Uh, right. And they're going to love uh, that's going to be interesting when he rolls into Lexington uh, yes, with the pig suey, the pig on the pig suey train. Um, but you know what? It's college basketball, man. Hey, we got lots more to talk about. Rick Bozich, the captain, is with us here on this Wacky Wednesday, brought to you by Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer, located right off of I-65 on uh, Veterans Parkway down in southern Indiana there. Incredible uh, food menu made fresh every day. Back with more right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. 
in the market. I guess the Arkansas athletic director tweeted it. I mean, was there a surprise? I'm like, this is just no. Been but kind you of always a... want to see it official. Yeah, I think my well, favorite part well, trust of this me. whole thing was the reporter who caught Kentucky or uh, caught Calipari walking down Richmond Road uh, with walking his dog in a stroller. In a stroller. Well, he was pushing a stroller. The dog, I think the dog walked some, but he rode the stroller some. That's odd. You, you didn't see him pushing the stroller? I just heard the audio. I didn't watch the uh, video. No, there's a video. He's pushing a stroller, <clears throat> and you can't see the dog, so you think the dog's in the stroller. And then from a different angle, he's pushing the stroller, and it's a little white. Looked like a Bashan Freeze or one of those kind of dogs <laughs> behind him walking along next to him. That's funny. Oh, it was a phenomenal video. I'm sure it got... Hundreds of thousands of views. Oh, I was. Let's see. <clears throat> Jason says, "Is this the place to be for lectures on how to be a no, fan? No. Is there a guidebook on how we are supposed to be fans?" Did because Anthony earlier, Leal, Anthony Leal spilled, spilled, stirred that stuff up again. I guess he went on with the hysterics and doubled down on what he said. Uh, you know what? I, I, I wouldn't know. I never listened to anything that's ever been on <laughs> there. Um, it's funny. I, I I'm like, he said he was defending just, his coach. That's why he said it. I haven't listened to it. I just read about it. Well, and then earlier I said, uh, I'm sick and tired of just reading. And I don't the IU fans. I said, I know that Kentucky fans are every fan, every rabid fan base has a uh, vote is vocal. But now in this age of social media, every swinging jackass thinks that they, it, it's just, the, it's the complaints that are happening this moment. Right. That are, I'm like, well, that's four months ago. Which is it, isn't it time to shut up? About why are you still complaining about stuff that's what's is going to be the coach next year? Get over it. Uh, it, it. Things are what they are. Get over it. I'm not saying you have to like it. I'm not saying anything other than just stop with the constant complaining of the same. Come up with something yeah. new and fresh. Come up with something. I mean, different. if you don't like it, quit going to the games. That's the most powerful <laughs> message you can you can send. All right, here yeah, we go, guys. Shock Market and Table, a part of the Wild Food Group, is your butcher, baker, and fish house, no matter where you live. This segment is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio on this Wednesday. How are you? Hope you're doing well. Rick Bloss, it's the captain from WDRB.com with us and plenty to talk about in the world of college basketball. Before you join us, Rick, I uh, expressed my – I'm just sick, just sick and tired of seeing uh, – and I see more of it because it's on a lot of my Twitter stuff and all that. But it's – IU fans that are still constantly complaining about – and I'm like – why are you complaining about this? Mike Woodson's he's going to be the coach. You don't have to like it, but it, it that's, it's a fact. So shut up about it. It's like, gee whiz quit. It's what it gnaws at me. It just like it gnawed at me the way he used senior day as a bully pulpit to quite out this true fan crap, which there's no such thing as a true fan. That, that does not exist. Um, and Brian Evans, a former IU great, pointed out why in the world, when you knew that Galloway and Leo were coming back next year, would they go through senior day festivities other than to be a megaphone for Mike Woodson? which is kind of what it turned out to be. And this, these are Brian Evans, 
for Brian. And I, I'm not saying it to put him on the spot. I'm saying it to give it validity. If if him saying it doesn't give it validity, yeah, I don't know what does. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that was all part of an orchestrated um, and not very effective PR campaign to rally support around Mike Woodson. Um, I don't think it worked. And I think the reason people are still complaining is twofold. One is Purdue just played in the national championship game. And two is there hasn't been any other than um, the Bryson Tucker. There hasn't been any change to I, IU basketball narrative in terms of them bringing in any different players. So people are going <clears> to <throat> dwell on the last things that have happened. And the last things that have happened w- were that they, you know, got bl- Big Ten tournament and Mike Woodson's going to be back. So until people see who how the roster is going to change and how next year might be different, people are going to linger on what the, their last memory is. Yeah, and uh, I would have thought the fact that Purdue got handled in the national championship game would have given some relief to Indiana fans, but it didn't really seem to. (laughs) Well, you could put it this way. Here's the way I explained it to people, that the worst Indiana team in 11 years only got beat by five more points against UConn than the best Purdue team of all time. So... That's Say that again. I missed. I missed the part of that. The worst Indiana team since 2011 only lost to UConn by five more points than the best Purdue team of all time. Oh wow! <laughs> that right? Is that is that coming in an in, in an upcoming article? <laughs> you it might yeah, it might. or a tweet that I will repost. <laughs> uh, too sweet. I didn't. That's. I, didn't tweet I always that say time. that because that is an incredible. A great point. All right. Maybe after I get off the show. It is a it is a great point. Uh, because when that happened, that's when the real wailing and gnashing of teeth started for IU fans. They're like, oh, my God. Uh, they realized how far away they were from where the program needed to be. And I've talked right. about the fact all day that – the reason for the last month I have said Purdue will not win the national championship is because you have to have elite players. The last five champions had four draft picks on it at minimum. UConn has it again. Purdue's got one, and it showed. That's exactly what happened. That elite talent shut Purdue down like a like a, 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 sh- a window shade. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan with a lot of respect to Matt Painter, <clears throat> but I didn't think he did a very good job Monday night. Um, I'm not sure if that was Tom Crean or Mike Woodson and he had the best three point shooting team in the country and he got in the national championship game and his team made one three point shot and only shot seven. He would be getting buried by the media, right? Oh, absolutely. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't make any adjustments. I mean, it was obvious their plan was to get Edie going early, and he wa- he did get going early. In the second half, it looked like Edie got fatigued and missed, what, his first six shots, and that's when UConn separated from the game. Fletcher Lawyer might as well have stayed in West Lafayette. He was a total no-show. Trey Kaufman-Wren scored the first basket of the game, and then he scored one more the rest of the game. Uh, Smith, is that what, what Jones? I, what's the kid from Southern Illinois? Lance, Lance Jones. Jones. All right. He had five points. They got two total points off the bench. I mean, it was Braden Smith and and Zach Eady. It was two against seven for most of the game. I mean, it, I I don't know. I mean, I, I'm I was surprised that Purdue didn't put up more of a fight than they did in that game. I cannot find Dag on it. Uh, Scott on here sent this to me yesterday. Um, the guy that uh, does a, an awful announcing, he did one when Kentucky lost to Oakland, talking about, you know, he was showing the uh, replays of the game. This is a cross screen. You go under the cross screen. Calipari is absolute <clears throat> garbage. Yeah. Right. Well, they he did one for Purdue. He did. And blasted and blasted and just showed how Purdue just got 
tore up uh, offensively by UConn and the third – the ED was just standing around half the time, uh, unengaged in, 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 in things. And, and he, he blasted Matt Painter. Um, but the truth of it is, it, again, I'll say it to I thought elite talent. <laughs> UConn had elite talent. Braden Smith is a good college player, but he's not elite. Fletcher Lawyer is a good college player, but he's not great, much less elite. Uh, none of those guys are Trey Kaufman, Wren, uh, Mason Gillis. None of those guys are great, great college. None players. of them are going to play in the league. NBA. None of them are going to no. come close to playing in the NBA. And, and when you're playing against a team that has that, right? And Edie will likely play in the NBA, but he's not going to be a. I'd be shocked if he was an NBA star. I, I, I mean, I, I he's his skill set is different than from what the NBA currently. Um, features or or wants so you know they did a great job they had a great year i mean they deserve all the credit in the world it's not hard it's not easy to win the big 10 regular season it's really hard to get to the championship game but i really thought in the line was what five or six they got beat by 15 and it was more than that at points and they for the last 10 minutes the game really wasn't in doubt uh, which might explain in part why the ratings weren't it didn't build to some dramatic conclusion yeah, and something I mentioned earlier, and I, I love to hear, Matt Painter has great culture, great guy. Matt Painter's a great guy, and he's a a, yeah. a really good coach. But is he letting the game pass him by with his insistence on not adjusting to the fact that it's it's no longer about four-year guys? It's no longer about guys that you get and you can develop over time and because you need the best talent, period. Uh, although they went further than anybody else, not named UConn. But that's because of, I, I mean, it's going to sound disingenuous, but it's because they had Zach Eady. He's a freak of nature. He's a generational player yeah. that's not going to come along again. I mean, he's had some guys. He had Ivy, and I think they thought Ivy would be there two years. He was only there one. Uh, I think they think Colvin has a chance to be, uh, you know, an All-Big Ten or uh, an NBA. They got the kid Catchings is coming in next year from Brownsburg. Kane Catchings. He has a, he, yeah, but, who, he has but what elite talent does he have coming in? That's the that's the thing. If you don't have elite players. Um, yeah. Well, I guess the hope is when you have – once you get to a final four, maybe that opens your opportunities to recruit better players. Maybe he can. Step well, but up does he want that? Players. Because he's. On I, the, I don't know. And will and will he change? That's that's what I'm saying. I'm not. I, again, I, he's a great guy. I think he's a really good coach. But the college game is just different now, and the, you have the ability to build a team quickly. Look what the hell that that Danny Hurley did. I still, I'll, I'll be shaking my head about that for a long time. It's amazing. Um, how in the world he, uh, the AP voted Sampson coach of the year over Hurley is ridiculous. Yeah, I didn't. I voted for Hurley. I mean, that was a no -brainer, I, I, is that, is that voting, uh, public? I don't, I'm sure it is. I think of the AP, the voters were the yeah, same because the poll the usually is basketball poll. It's the yeah the the ballots for the AP poll are public, so I I think that is public. I don't know if they've released it or not. You probably have to Google it, and I, I would think it is. It's they they tell us they're going everything's going to be released at some point. Like who we all voted for the all American. You vote for three five player all American teams. That was public. Well, we'll certainly look for it. So now Indiana, uh, they have visitors starting to come in now. This is where their visitors go to, especially during Little Five, which is next weekend. Uh, that's a big time weekend to have guys in to get a taste of uh, the school. You've got Louisville and a new coach who is going to have to gel with the guys he's got, go out and get more. Then you've got Kentucky who has to land a coach, but that's not going to be a problem for them. 
will the guys hang out long enough till the new coach's name? Do you think down there? Uh, the current players on the roster, they've already been at least three, I think in the portal, a Thero, the kid from Pittsburgh that considered Indiana before he went to UK. He's in the portal. Um, Dillingham's already announced he's going pro Bradshaw's in the portal, which some people say Indiana is involved with him. He's the center that played on the same AAU team with Boogie McKenzie Fland. And Boogie Fland. Boogie Fland. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Boogie Flan has not asked for his letter uh, for his release. Carter Knox has. I can't think of the Justin Edwards is one of their players who I think has decided he's going to the NBA. So yeah, they've already taken a roster hit. Everybody's waiting to see what Reed Shepard does. He's the he's the big name and DJ Wagner. Those are the two. Big well, he's going first. to the NBA. My God, he's a lottery pick. Yeah, I don't think everybody believes that because he's a Kentucky kid that maybe Kentucky could put together a package to keep to stall that for one more year and he can play another year of college basketball and have a, a more of a storybook farewell. But it depends on who they hire. And He I, would I be know. the highest ranked potential draft pick <laughs> to ever come back to college. Yeah, but his mom and dad are former UK basketball players who live an hour away. Who that that's a you can't put a dollar figure on watching your son have a have an incredible uh, second season at UK. I, I, I don't disagree with that, but I would just be, it would just be shocking because it hasn't happened. Not, I mean, I, right. I don't know what the, 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 the highest expected draft pick was that ever that came back in it's this era. Question. Uh, but I mean, Tim, every <clears throat> mock I've seen has got him in every well, I mean, single Grant, top 10. Grant Hill and Tim Duncan all stayed four years. Remember that? Yeah, but that's back when you could you would do that. Back that's back in the old days, Rick. Damn, I mean. Yeah, but that's back when you couldn't you couldn't get nil money then. I doubt if Wake Forest was paying Tim Duncan a bunch. <laughs> hey, Nike was dropping dimes. Don't worry, just go ask uh, Zion Williamson's family about how that went for him. Uh, so I, you're but, probably yeah. right, but those guys did stay four years, so different world. But yeah, so now we get to uh, watch the, all the changes at all three of these area schools, uh, which are all three different changes. Indiana State, their poor program. You want to talk about wrecked. You lose your coach and the entire team to the portal. And I suggested earlier, uh, Lil Rody, he should dip into his IU fund and uh, for $1.5 million, I think he could start a, or buy a brand new starting five. <laughs> That's the thing I really hate about this is that for people like fans at Indiana State who suffered for a long time and finally had a tremendous season of celebration, you know, 24 or 48 hours after the season ends, it just totally washed away. Uh, and that's that's tough to watch, uh, you know, wherever you're at, to see everything you invested so much of your time and money and emotion in uh, all of a sudden is just gone. And that's... That's the world we live in now, and it's not going to go back to the way it used to be. Andy thinks that the difference between UConn and Purdue was uh, purely backcourt. At he doesn't does he does not think it was purely uh, athletic athleticism uh, in the backcourt. To to him, it seemed more schematic. UConn playing more of a motion offense. Uh, so your thoughts? I, I still think that. There may, I'm sure that there was, but I'm not going to say that Matt Painter got out coached. Although, in the highlights that I watched from that one thing that I talked about earlier, there were several times where UConn just beat them on so many different things. But athleticism is athleticism is part of that. Yeah, I think several things were. I think it's a little bit of both. I think I think it's schematic and athleticism. The, the schematic things that were very apparent to me was UConn does do a tremendous job of getting their shooters free. They run the double pin down on one side of the floor. If that guy's not open, the same two guys go from the top of the lane on one side to the bottom of the lane on the other side and get another guy free for a three point shot on the other side of the floor. The second thing I'll say is um, they were not afraid to attack the basket, even though Edie blocked a lot of shots, they kept attacking the basket on him and not just with clinging. Other guys went inside and tried to score. They weren't always successful. Even if the shots got blocked, they came back and tried it again. The third thing I'd say is that Connecticut played Edie for the most part, especially early, 
straight up, which means they didn't cheat off shooters and the shooters from Purdue didn't get open. Painter didn't make an adjustment to get them open. And the fourth thing I'll say is because of the pace of the game and the way UConn gets up and down the floor, I thought it was very notable that Edie tired out in the second half. Airball that free throw. I, that's like the second time he did that in yeah. the tournament, I think. Yeah. Uh, One minute. He looked gassed. So, he's a, I mean, he's different. Clayton's a thinner, more athletic guy who can run up and down the court, and he has a backup. First played less than a minute. And I, I thought Edie was fatigued in the second half. I really did. Yeah, no question about that. What's up next for you, sir? Waiting on the puff of smoke from Rep Arena to see who the next coach is. <laughs> Waiting Scott for the white Drew. smoke to emerge from Rep Arena. Yeah, they're going to have Scott Drew in the paddock doing riders up for the, for the next <laughs> race at Keeneland. That'll be fun. Rick Bozich yeah. from WDRB.com. Make sure you get – was you going to say something? I was just going to say with the portal and roster things, you, you got to move pretty quickly on this. Otherwise, you know, you, you got to put a team together, man. <laughs> Uh, absolutely. The Masters Par 3 tournament today, and that starts get tomorrow. Out. Bye. We've got more coming up then. Thank you, Rick Bozich from WDRB.com. Tomorrow, we've got, uh, you'll hear from Kurt Signetti, or uh, Scott Griffith to join us. Uh, on, I, too much to think about right now, but plenty more. And we'll talk basketball, of course, as it's an ever-moving story. Uh, Jason, or Scott, Sean, will, Sean Rather will continue to to love me, he must be our, our my favorite new fan. But uh, thanks to John, as always, for keeping us between the white lines. Most importantly, each and every one of you. Without you, we've got no reason to be here, and we are grateful. Back with more of it tomorrow. Until then, I'm Jim Coyle. I will see you on the radio. Thanks for listening to Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page for more clips and team coverage of Indiana basketball, football, and more. You can also find full episodes and tons of other content on thehoosier.com. We'll see you next time for another edition of Indiana Sports.